pandemic. Um, before we jump in, I do want to tell you a little bit about the hosting organizations. My name is Shari Holly. I'm Director of Operations for Pipelines, and we are a mobile app that's designed to connect underrepresented talent directly to job and training opportunities across tech, entertainment, and creative industries. And we're so honored to partner with the California State University Entertainment Alliance to bring you a bi-weekly series to increase education about the wonderful career paths in entertainment and creative industries. So before we dive in, I do want to kick it over to Dina to tell you a little bit about the CSU EA, and then we'll get right to the conversation. Thanks, Shari. Hi, everybody, and thank you so very much for making time on this Friday. I'm sure you've all had an intense week like uh, uh, we have, um, everybody on this panel. The CSU Entertainment Alliance exists to help students go from campus to career. So we've got a lot of opportunities. Um, please follow us on social. We are at the CSU EA. We'll pop some links into the chat. And more information on our program is at csuentertainment.com. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Michelle and Leah today. And without further ado, I'm going to toss it uh, back to them and let's get to Amazing. Thank you so much, Gina. So today's um, a little bit unconventional. It's a hybrid event. And what that means is we're going to have a few questions that we're going to uh, hear from the panelists about their stories and their experience um, in this business and in this space. And then we're going to open up the floor to you because we want to make sure that we offer the opportunity for you to be able to ask questions and leave feeling inspired and empowered if you're interested in this business as a career or if you're um, tackling those auditions during a pandemic, we all know that that's really uh, difficult. And so we wanna provide this space to make sure that you leave with um, additional knowledge, that you feel empowered and that you feel inspired. So in the beginning, like I said before, this will be a panel format and then I'll open up the floor for um, AMA. And basically what that means is if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A feature. So when I open that floor, we just ask that you send your questions through the Q&A and I'll make sure that I ask them on your behalf to Michelle and Leah. So without further ado, I would love for the panelists just to introduce themselves, um, who they are, what they do, and then we'll jump right into the conversation. Why don't we start with Michelle? Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Homerin. I'm a manager of casting at ABC Signature, which is part of Walt Disney Television. Hi everyone, I'm Leah Daniels Butler and I am an independent casting director uh, and I cast film and television and I am frequently hired by ABC Signature. That's true. <laughs> Perfect combo. Um, so let's just lead right into it. So um, this will be popcorn style so you can feel free to answer the questions how you see fit. Can you tell us a little bit about your career journey and what led you to your current casting position? Do you want me to go, Michelle? Go ahead, Leah. <laughs> um, my career journey. Okay, so I didn't necessarily know that I wanted a, a career in casting when I first started, honestly. Um, I think I've always, I come from a creative family. So I think that um, we've all always knew that, you know, we were creative people, but I don't know that, or at least I didn't know that this was a career that I wanted to um I wanted to have until I was actually introduced to it. Um, I didn't go to school for, you know, film. Um, I literally learned in the school of hard knocks in the office of Jackie Brown, Carmen, or Jackie Brown, I'm sorry, she's no longer Carmen, but Jackie Brown and Kim Harden. And they were two black female casting directors at the time who just took me under their wing and those are the shoulders that I stand on. They just saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself at 24, 25 years old. And uh, just gave me the opportunity to sit in a room and learn actors, learn how they communicate with producers, just everything. I was a sponge and they encouraged that. So it's important for me to look back and, um, and just pay it forward. Um, so I actually grew up in the theater world. Um, I grew up in Chicago and I grew up, you know, acting since I was like a small child and training at Piven and Looking Glass and the Goodman and all of these places. Um, and I really loved that, but I really wanted to explore the TV and film space. And at the time in Chicago, there was no, there was no TV and film. Now it's like a very robust, um, film and TV center. I mean, Leah and I got really close because we worked on Empire together, which actually sh shot in Chicago. Um, and so I decided I wanted to move to LA. I went to USC um, and I kind of just interned around trying to figure out what I wanted to do because 
unlikely I don't come from a creative family. My family is all um, Asian immigrants and frankly, my dad grew up on a farm in Iowa. So like they still don't understand what I do. Um, and so I kind of did everything. I interned at a film finance company, which was not for me. We'll just put it that way. Um, I interned at Morgan Freeman's production company, which was like an amazing experience. And back in the day when like you were basically an assistant as an unpaid intern, um, but you learned a lot. That was the trade-off, you know? Um, but production wasn't for me those, I mean, I remember the VP telling me one day that she had been working on her passion project for 10 years and I'm very much so not someone who's gonna respond well to that timeline. So I was like, okay, I don't think, I don't think the film industry is for me. <laughs> um, but someone there suggested that I go work at an agency and I'd been really loath to do that because my father was a lawyer and I'd grown up in that environment and didn't really think that was for me. But she said it was the best way that I would learn everything about the industry and meet everyone in town. Um, so I ended up interning at ICM in their um, television lit department, which was definitely not for me. Um, but I went back for a second semester in their TV talent department. And that was like, that kind of sparked it. I was like, this is it. Um, so I spent a couple years at ICM. I was a trainee in the motion picture talent department. Um, but I decided that I think for me, I wanted to be a little bit closer to the creative. So I made the jump over to the studio side where I could still have that kind of like business corporate structure, but with a little bit more creative freedom and a little bit closer to like producers in the actual, sorry, and the actual process. So that's kind of where I ended up where I am today. And then I came over to ABC Signature in the Disney Fox merger, like I guess a year and a half ago. Amazing. And to that point, could you guys just share a little bit about how COVID has affected the casting space or how it has evolved over the past year? I know a lot of industries were affected very differently, especially entertainment. So with this particular space and industry, can we talk a little bit about how COVID has affected that and how it has evolved since the beginning of the pandemic? I think on the casting side, it definitely has, because obviously you don't have in-person auditions. Um, everything is done virtually. Um, a lot of self tapes are, you know, are being viewed and requested because of, you know, the lack of um, contact that we have to have and, and just being safe. But I mean, it's changed in, in some ways good in some ways not so good, to be honest with you, because for me now I see more actors. I do. I feel like I, because I'm putting out self tape requests where I wouldn't normally, because normally you, you have a, you know, you have their actors, um, you put out a breakdown and you have a certain time obviously to read actors so you can, before you can cast the role. But um, there's only so many auditions you can do and still get your work done in a day. Now um, I can send out self tape auditions and I can, you know, see all these people that I probably would not have seen. And then from there, you know, oh, okay. I, I just, I see a, a more of a variety of people. On the flip side, there are people who don't, you know, sometimes didn't audition. So it's, you know, when I say didn't audition, they don't, um, they don't necessarily pre-read. So how do you get someone that, and I, I can explain to you what pre-reads are and producers, you know, what those sessions mean um, later, but how do you get someone who doesn't normally pre-read or come straight, you know, straight into for producers to do that when you're not necessarily having as many producer sessions. So it's become, you know, a little um, muddy in some areas, but um, for the most part, I think I'm definitely seeing more actors and I'm sort of a Zoom aficionado now. I know how to uh, <laughs> uh, audition actors. I know how to chemistry read. I, I literally have learned everything about Zoom that there is to know in terms of auditioning. She's not wrong. So literally Leah and I did, I think probably the first pilot that cast during COVID. Um, yep. It was a free form pilot that we did together. And it was literally right in like March, April when everything shut down and we were the only thing casting in town. And so Leah and I were trying to figure out how does one audition via Zoom? We tried other sites. It was kind of before, I feel like now the industry has kind of like figured out the online audition process, but we we did not have it at that time. So I'm not gonna lie to you, Leah's like protocols and what she figured out are what we still use. So good job, Leah. And sorry, I <laughs> stole you. your work. But, <laughs> Thank you. But it is funny. Yeah, I agree with Leah. I think we're seeing a lot more actors, which is awesome. Um, and I agree, we're seeing a lot more actors of different types and maybe some actors that we normally wouldn't have, you know, gotten around to solely because of, as she said, it's always time, not only time in a day, but time of, you know, when we get 
the time from when we get a pilot ordered to when we have to have everyone at a table read, usually a tight turnaround. We're talking under two and a half months. Um, it sounds like a long time, but when you're going through it, it's not. And you usually have six, seven, eight roles to cast, depending on if you're doing a comedy or a drama, and it can be a lot. Um, and so I think, yeah, to Leah's point, I do think this time, what the good thing that's come out of it is that we can see more actors. We can open it up on the series regular side. We can see anyone across the country on the guest star side. It is a little bit more difficult to travel people in the time of COVID. I'm just trying to keep everything really safe. Um, but I think that's been really great because, you know, Lee and I can read someone in Nashville or read someone in Texas. Um, and that's not something we were able to do previously. So I do think it's been really great in that respect. And so do you think, I don't even know if we can say this when COVID is over. I feel even weird saying that because <laughs> it's like, when is this going to be over? But do you, do you think when, when this is actually over that some aspects of casting will still be done remotely? Or how has this new normal really disrupted the way that you guys are doing your jobs? Do you think that will carry over when we do get, get back into the office and, and things do return to some sense of normalcy? Do you think you'll still continue to uh, do your job remotely or how do you think that that's going to happen once we open the world back up if that's a thing <laughs> it's funny we've been talking about that a lot lately because like we have to we have to hope that it's going to open up and soon because I think we're all going to like lose our minds if it doesn't so we have to like talk about what that looks like um I know as far as like zooms and things like we are up in Burbank on the lot and I do think that we and others waste a considerable amount of time driving from wherever you are to Burbank and vice versa. Um, so I do think that Zoom meetings and those kinds of things are going to become more prevalent. We've been taking generals with actors in, let's say, London. And, you know, the, the past response used to be, well, let, let me know when they're in L.A. Um, so I do think that's opened that up a lot. So I do think those kinds of aspects will stay. We've clearly proven that we can, you know, shoot and cast television remotely for the most part, minus their crew who actually has to be on the ground on the lot. Um, and I do think those aspects will remain, but I do think we'll go back to seeing actors in person and doing all those things too. So I think it'll actually be a nice balance. I'm hoping it'll be a nice balance of, you know, keeping that kind of accessibility um, while kind of returning to the seeing actors in person things. I do think Lee and I miss you know, testing actors and hanging out in the tape room with them and like really making that connection and having actors be in the room with producers and having actors be in the room with each other because now you're getting to pilots where they see each other through the screen until their first day of filming. And I do think that there's a little bit lost in that kind of relationship that you're normally developing over a couple of weeks of, you know, prep, whether it's fittings or table reads or things that you're kind of like doing together. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Sorry, I put myself on mute because my the vacuum cleaner is going. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I agree. I think that it, it, hopefully it will, but I'm not gonna lie. I might be a little hard pressed to go back into the office full time when it comes back. Um, only because I have figured out that I can do it here. Um, I can do it. The only thing I really miss outside of, again, the human connection with reading the actors and really being able to connect with them and, 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 and talk about the part in depth and, you know, try to, to work with them a little, you know, more um, in person is just not having the people in my office, like my staff, like how we communicate, like yelling to the other room and brainstorming when you have to make lists and, you know, it, it's just, it's a different energy. So I do miss that, um, those aspects of it, but I don't know that even when we do open back up that I will be in my office full time. I might go in just a couple days a week um, just to, you know, just because I may have to be there. But for the most part, it's going to be pretty hard pressed to get me in. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I agree, especially because, you know, with, with that kind of work and the convenience, right? Of being mm -hmm. So totally. Um, I'm actually going to ask this question because if, if they're in the audience and they're looking to begin a career as a casting director, I, I just want you to, how did you get your start? Like, how do you, if you're an aspiring casting director, what should you be doing right now to prepare for that type of career? Like, where do you start? What should they, what kind of resources can they plug into if they're in the audience and they're mm -hmm. looking to get their start as a casting director? I do think that's important to touch on. Yes, as an independent casting director, I think that um, if you're if you really want to get into casting, you have to know actors. You know, you have to. I think study film. You know, I always give assistants um, that come into my office. I give them required watching movies that they must watch 
in order to understand what we're looking for and how people really, um, um, you know, just the different choices that they make. And, you know, cause you can look, obviously talent is subject to, <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say talent, but a good audition and a bad audition is subject to the person that's watching. Do you know what I mean? Somebody might say, oh, that person's awful. Someone say, actually, I didn't think they were that bad. You know, so I think it's subject to, you know, each individual. But I do think the core of acting in a skill is something and, and, and learning, you know, the choices that actors make is something that you um, over time have to develop a taste, you know, what to look for, what not to look for, how to, um, how to, uh, uh, because as a casting director, again, you're in the, in the room with the actors first. So you have to learn sort of how to communicate with them because you're not a director per se, but we are the first people who hear this material. So a lot of times we're the first ones reading the lines before even the, the director or the producer see it. So there's a, a communication that we have to have with actors. And I think you learn that by just watching different actors. So definitely you need to, lover of film, lover of actors, um, I would encourage, um, there is a, a, a movie, um, there's just required, you know, watching in terms of how you get into it. It's, listen, it was used to be different. You know, I came in at a time where, um, because I had administrative skills, I was able to work for, you know, Jackie and Kim and just come right in and be an assistant. That was a time when they had fax machines. That was, the, you know, fax machines was a big thing. And um, submissions came through, um, through a courier at the end of the day, you know, and we stood and we went through pictures and, you know, so it was a different kind of um, uh, position at the time as an assistant. I was fortunate again, that I didn't have to intern. Um, but I think if you can find a casting director where you can intern, um, and when I say intern, I mean paid internship. <laughs> um, and so you can, if you can get into their office and learn the things hand on, a lot of times with assistants, I, 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 it's hard, you know, they can't, um, casting directors may want you to have experience before you come into the office. And how do you get the experience if you can't get in, you know what I mean? If you, so it's like the chicken before the egg. What I try to do is if there is someone who's had some production experience, if they, you know, if I'm looking for an assistant, it's easier for my associate to, you know, help train them. Um, but it's, again, it's about timing, I think sometimes. Um, and I also think that if, if it's something that you really want to do, there's resources. The CSA has a assistance program um, that if you can join, it's, you don't, you're not, you're not like um, doing ha like hands-on work, but they take you through each and every step that the casting, independent casting directors and studio as well, um, what we go through. So they learn um, the tools that we use for instance, like breakdown services and they learn EcoCast and they learn, you know, you have to learn how to run a camera and you have to learn how to um, log tapes and you have to learn how to give out addition. You know, there's so many different elements to what an assistant does. So obviously you start in that position and you work your way up. I've had the, you know, I, I've worked with um, one of my associates, Gregory um, Kohanjian, he started as an assistant and he didn't have much experience, but, um, what I liked about him was he he was so eager to like to learn. Like he genuinely loved actors and casting and would always, you know, just had so many questions. And it was just and 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 so I was just that's the kind of person that you have to be. You can't wanna be an actress. You can't want to most most casting directors that I know, not me, were actresses before they were casting directors. Um, so I don't think you, you, you have to really have an affinity for talent and what we do. Otherwise, it's not something for you. It's, it's, it's not for the meek, I would say. <laughs> did I answer the question? Yeah, you did. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Michelle, do you have anything to add? I was just going to say, um, I do think whatever you're starting out in this industry, whether it's for a casting director or not, you are going to start as an assistant of some kind to someone. And I think 
you know, those basic administrative skills that Leah talked about are so important because our industry moves so fast. It's a lot of volume and it's kind of relentless. Um, so I just think being prepared for that because you're going to be answering phones, you're going to be answering emails, you know, just being able to write good correspondence. Leah and I, I'm sure, have both seen really poorly written emails. I think communication is really important in our industry. Um, so, you know, phone etiquette, email etiquette, I realize these things seem really basic, but I think you would all probably be shocked at some of the experiences that we've had with some assistants just starting out. And I think those translate to any position, being super organized, being really on top of it. If you say you're going to do something by a certain time, get it done. Um, you know, things like that, that just are really important. And that's what's going to set you above and beyond the other assistants, because at the end of the day, like you are going to be in a way, I hate to say this, but like competing against those people to get promoted, to move up in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so what can you do to set yourself apart? Because you definitely, you know, I was an assistant for almost 10 years and it's not because I wasn't a good one. Um, I just think that like, there's so many people who want to do this and you really have to, as Leah said, love it. Um, not want to do anything else. Can't imagine your life without it. And just really devote yourself to doing whatever it takes to like be the best that you can be in whatever position you end up doing, because that's how you're going to succeed. Yes, I love it. <laughs> All good stuff. Um, and then Leah, you touched on this um, to my next question. You touched on this a bit, but can, we, can you guys walk us through the different kinds of technology or, or technology platforms that you use to conduct casting sessions so they're, they're, they're aware that this is not just hopping on Zoom? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I mean, well, I think the first once you know every actor and I don't know if they want to be in acting or if they want to be an actor or if they want to be in casting but there is a basic platform that we use and it's called breakdown um, services and breakdown services is uh, for us how we are able to get the the character descriptions out for the roles that we're going to cast so we you know just to take you through you know steps we get a script we send it to breakdown, they break down the characters, um, we get them approved. And after um, those roles are approved, it goes out on um, electronically to uh, a bunch of agents and talent managers. So, and then they submit to us. Now, there was a time when those breakdowns would be delivered by courier to talent agencies every morning. <laughs> now it's all electronic. But in doing so, the submissions are now electronic. So we receive those submissions um, and uh, uh, go through the process of setting up the actors that we want to see for each role. Um, for the actor side, there is a, um, uh, a service called, uh, 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 what's the, 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 if you're not represented side, um, actors access. Actors access. Yes, thank you, Michelle. There's actors access. So if you don't have representation, you can submit yourself for certain roles that we may um, release. But a lot of times, if you know, if it's if we're not looking for something specialty or um, a specific, if it's not an open search, then we don't necessarily use actors access. But any actor should be, you know, on that service. It's free. Um, you should definitely be on that service because it's how you can hear about uh, projects that are, you know, being currently being currently cast. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, obviously, uh, the process is reading the actors and bringing the choices to the producers and the director and ultimately submitting those choices to, you know, the studio who um, approves them. Great. Um, I do want to, before I ask the last two questions, if you have questions, I see some questions coming in through the Q&A, feel free to drop them in the Q&A right now. Any and all questions, we're going to open up the floor in just a bit if you have questions for Leah and Michelle. So please drop it in the Q&A so we can make sure that we get that answered right away. Um, so I just wanted to stress that um, the Q&A feature is at the bottom. You can ask your question and I'll ask it for you in a bit. Um, so that was great. So now I kind of want to switch gears a bit. So if you have someone in the audience who is actually doing the auditioning, so I want to talk about that for a bit. What are kind of the do's and don'ts of giving your greatest performance when you're doing an audition? Can we talk about that if you're in the audience and you're wondering if you did a great job or things that you should keep in mind or be mindful of when you're, when you're conducting an audition? Um, how do they give it their best performance? How do they impress you? Turn to go? You want me to go? 
I think Leah probably sees some more of the mistakes I want to say than I do, because honestly, she she's our first level of defense, right? She's filtering tapes. I only see, frankly, I only see the better ones. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure that I'm getting some of those. So I feel like Leah's probably better suited to, but here's the good news. And this is the truth. Everyone who's in that room or everyone, anyone who's watching your tape, we want you to succeed. We literally want you to come in, crush it. And for every single person to say, that's the person. I feel like a lot of times people find it intimidating or we think, you think that we just like want to say no, especially as an executive. And that is so like, couldn't be further from the truth. You make my job and my life and everyone else is so much easier when you come in and slay. Like, seriously, that's just the truth. So just no matter what, just know that you did your like, put it all out there and just know that we're rooting for you. And that if there's a note to give you to make your performance better, we're going to give it to you. We're going to give you that opportunity if we see something. Um, I'll let Leah talk more about the nitty gritty. But. Um, I think if you're coming into a room, the, the first thing is being prepared. You know what I mean? You want to be prepared. Uh, and being off book is great. Um, but don't be so off book that you're um, not open to the fact that sometimes people come into the room and they could have it all memorized. And then when they come in, it's gone. Like I have literally seen that happen. And I feel so bad for the actor because I know that it's just nerves. So um, in those instances, what I will do is I will have, you know what, listen, take a breath. Let's relax. You know, if you need to go out and get some water, if you just need to shake it off, whatever you need to do, you know, let's figure that out. So when you come back in, you can give your best audition. Um, I will do that. I will try to make the, especially if I know the actor is nervous, I will try to make the actor feel comfortable because I know that it's really just nerves. And it's easy for me to say, don't be nervous <laughs> when you want this job so bad, but just know this in the back of your head, we got to do the same thing. We got to tap dance for our jobs as well. We got to, you know what I mean? So, you know, there are times when I have going up for big you know, big, big projects, and I'm just as nervous. So it, the nerves, just use that to your benefit, if you can. Use that to your advantage. Figure out how you can channel that those nerves into whatever the character is. Um, I think also um, making choices, you know, have a clear, a clear choice of how you see this character. Obviously be open for adjustments because they may ask you for adjustments, but um, just be have a choice. Um, sometimes when you, you know, you might get material, it, it, there are things that may not necessarily be on the page. So you just got to think about what's in the scene. That's, those are the things I think that stand out when we are reading actors, just the choices that they make, the nuance that they have, how they really dissected the character and, you know, just, um, appreciate, not appreciate, but understand, um, the, the the character and the story and, and, and making up sometimes you may not get um information on who the character is you know you may just get some sides a trick that I always tell actors if they hey um um is there a script available there may not be a script available but a cheat to that is print out all the sides for all the other roles I'm looking for you can kind of piece the story together you know what I mean just try to think of things that the other person that wants that job 10 times more than you do <laughs> is going to do and do it, you know. Um, in terms of don'ts, there's a lot of don'ts. Um, don't be late. Don't make excuses. Um, let's see. Know your boundaries. <laughs> um, I don't particularly care for people to use props. You know, I've had people use glitter and glitter was in my office for a week. <laughs> Um, you know, I, you know, so I just say, make, um, bold choices, be open to change, be prepared, be on time, um, and be kind and have integrity. I love it. Okay. So we have some questions coming in and feel free to answer however you see fit. I'm going to jump right in. So hello, thank you so much for this panel. Thank you, Regina. Her question is, if we don't have specific acting experience to put in a request to audition, is TikTok something we can leverage to show proof of our skill level? Well, I will say this. Um, TikTokers are being represented (laughs) by big talent agencies. So clearly there's a market for it somewhere. Um, I will say this. 
And I've gotten, you know, links to TikTok page, to Instagram page. Oh, this person has, you know, 2 million followers or, you know, um, kajillion views on TikTok or whatever the case may be. Um, but I will say this, that does not translate to skill in terms of acting. That does not translate to you being an actor. You might be able to keep my attention for a little, you know, 15, 20 or 30 seconds, but can you understand the, the complexities of a character and the arcs and the, um, and the, 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 the colors and the layers that this character may have to, may have to perform. Um, if you don't understand that, if you don't have basic training and basic skills, that is not going to help you. Um, it's only going to show me that, oh, you can be cute, you can be amusing, you can be funny for a few minutes. But if I bring you in, and I have brought in, I have read a lot of social media influencers, um, a lot of them. Some of them have used their social media platform to, um, to, uh, uh, to leverage their acting career because they started out in acting. And then they said, okay, well, let me get a following here. Let me see what I can, you know, build up my brand. And then when I go in, at least I'm being seen for that way. Um, and sometimes that works because I've seen it work for several of them. Woody McLean, Melvin Gregg, like I can name a bunch of social influencers who were actors first, went to social media, now they're, you know, this is what they really want to do. But if you have started out in the social media platform and you don't get some form of training, when you're up against real actors on screen, they're gonna eat you alive and you're gonna be cut away from, they're gonna cut out all your scenes. You'll become, you know what I mean? It, it, it's like sort of the, who can I refer to without being, I can't refer to nobody because I don't want to name drop, but I, <laughs> but I will say this, training is key. Training is, is, is key. So just do as much training, get as much training as you can. If I could offer a suggestion, I honestly, and even from the biggest talent agencies, from WME, from CA, like I have seen this, when they sign a new client who doesn't have material to show or has a big movie, they'll call it like in the can that we can't see yet. I've honestly had them send me self-tapes. If you have a great self-tape, pick a random set of sides that you can get your hands on that's good for you. Put yourself on tape and use that. I've seen it so many times. Don't be afraid to get creative and do things like that. I think that especially these days, the more entrepreneurial you can be as an actor, the more you can create your own content and create those places you can shine, the better off you're going to be, regardless of what format that looks like. I just think that might serve you better than like a TikTok, just to be completely honest. Agreed. Thank you. Um, next question. Can your representation reach out for feedback when an actor makes it to the last round of callbacks but doesn't book? Yes, they should. They should. Hey, is there? Listen, when actors are just pre-reads, they'll act. They'll. I'll get. Sometimes I'll get um, calls about feedback. It's not my responsibility to call your agent and give them feedback. If your agent wants to know why you're not booking or why you're not going to producers or what, call me and ask me, um, and I will give you know constructive feedback. Uh, I have given. I encourage that because again, the actor, you know, they don't know what 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 they could, you can come in and think that you've done a, a really kick-ass audition and then like, oh yeah, I know I got that. And then you don't get it. And you're like, well, what did I do wrong? It, it so many things, it, nothing necessarily wrong. It just, maybe they had four people that did it exactly like you when they needed somebody different. Maybe you remind, you know, you look like one of the other cast members. There could be so many other, there's so many things, you know, things that come into play as to why an actor doesn't get a role. Um, but yeah, I think I got off topic. No, that was perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, next question is if, if, I'm sorry, as a second year film student, I'm aiming to soon land an internship or an assistant role in casting. How helpful is emailing casting directors for work? What other advice would you give someone like me? Go on CSA. See if you can, because uh, as assistants, I think it's free for you to upload your resume and um, casting directors go to the CSA website when they're looking for assistance or we're looking for an associate, we'll put out a um, notice that we're looking for an assistant or an associate. So I think that that's probably the best place to 
put your resume or at least to have your resume um, on file, the CSA website, Casting Society of America. And I also think if you're having difficulty getting in with a casting director or something like that, you know, think big picture. What's the process start to finish? You're going to learn a little bit about the casting process by working at a talent agency, by working for a manager, by working at a studio or a network. I think that there's a lot of different ways you can learn that process as kind of an overview. And I do think that's really helpful. So don't feel pigeonholed into just that specific thing that you want to do. I actually think a lot of people in our industry started in a different area of it and have switched. And it just gives you a better understanding of the business. Not to say that you can't start in one thing and totally crush it and never work in any other aspect of the industry. But I do think, especially recently, that's been like a growing trend. So just, you know, just always have a backup plan if you can't get your first choice, because we all got passed over for internships back in the day and we're, you know, we're fine. So. <laughs> Um, the next question asks, what makes an actor stand out to you? Um, I think just bold choices. Someone, for me, an actor that is confident is the most attractive thing that you can see. When an actor comes in and they are not nervous and they just under, you know, they, they just, there's just a confidence level. It's just so attractive because you know what? You can actually talk to them like a human being. They're not intimidated because they think that, you know, we're these casting people and we're the gatekeepers because we're not. Um, I think it, it, it is, those are the, the types of, and it's hard to tell someone to be, not be nervous or be confident. Um, it, that's hard. But I think for me, that is the most, um, the thing that stands out the most, just having the confidence, knowing that you can do it, not, you know, being secure. Um, and, and leaving it in the room. Listen, you can only do the best that you can do. So come in there, do the best that you can do. If you call yourself an actor, right? And you love acting, not being a star, but acting, you love the craft of acting. Then every chance you get to do it, then you're doing something that you love. So when you come in and pre-read, the, the booking the job is the cherry on top. <laughs> you're, uh, you know what I mean? You're auditioning. That's, that's what you're acting. You're getting a chance to do what you love. So and I think off that you love every oh, day. Sorry. If you do what if you do what you love, then if you pick a pick a job that you love, then you'll never have to work another day in your life. And that's true. <laughs> um, I was just going to say auditioning. I think like interviewing is a skill. So I think the more that you do it, the better you will be at it. And frankly. And Lee and I have seen this a million times. There are some actors who just aren't good auditioners and we just know that. So, you know, just don't worry about it. Do your best and leave it be. And, and it's our job to kind of extrapolate off what you give us in a room because we can tell it was just nerves. We can tell you had a bad day. We can tell, you know, whatever the, the issue may be. So just don't overthink it and just leave it in the room. Cause if you dwell on it after you leave, like you'll never, yeah. you'll just spiral. <laughs> It's not good. We've all seen it. Um, so I have a few questions. I'm going to try and condense this the best way as possible because they're kind of asking the same thing. But quite a few people are asking if they don't have a background in acting or maybe they don't have any or very, very little experience, how can they still stand out to a casting director? I mean, it's like I was saying earlier. I think that there are times when I have literally hired actors that, you know, don't have training like when we think about Gabrielle Sidibe and we think about damn near the whole cast of Empire you know what I mean outside of you know they had no form of formal training um but we were looking for specific things Precious was very specific you know um Gabrielle Sidibe that was a very specific role um uh, uh in Empire we had to find actors that could sing that could rap that could dance you know what I mean so it was very specific in what we were looking for so we had to go out the normal realms of what how we the normal traditional way of casting and open it up to you know just regular everyday people and in that instance it's um and I hate to say because it, it sounds so cliche there there's a thing called raw talent do you know what I mean raw talent is someone that has never acted before but can pick up a lines and you can tell that they're green but you can tell with training or with coaching they are something special do you know what I mean that's called having the it factor I think 
And I think that there are people that have that instinctively. There are people that understand nuance that have never, never even, that actors who are trained don't know. You know what I mean? Things that they just, and that's inherent. Again, that's called the it factor. But still, even with that, if you're gonna be up against these big hitters, you have to get some form of coaching because you you have to know how to um, how to interact with them, how to speak that language, and and that you want them to respect you as an actor as well. And if they feel like for one moment you're not being honest and you don't respect that craft, then you know it's going to show. It'll it'll show in the performance. So um, there are instances to answer the question. There are instances in where we hire people that may not have you know. Um, technical uh, experience or you know training but then um, I think once you do get in the door it's your responsibility to respect it because I call those Cinderella stories you know they come in they do it that one time and they think oh I'm here I've arrived and then you'll never see them again you don't see them again because they ain't none of damn training <laughs> I'm sorry I don't know I think what Leah said is really important no, 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 but it's true. I think even after you graduate school, continue going to act, go to acting classes, go to UCB, you know, find those resources. I, you would be, I think, surprised at the level of actor who still regularly takes acting class. It is, and, and we hire coaches for people all the time. It is a muscle. And if you don't exercise that muscle regularly, you know, it, 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 it's not where it could be, you know? So I do just encourage you never, never stop with that because there's always more to learn and there's always more to do and there's ways to get better. I mean, Lee and I have been doing this for a while now and I still, there are still times I'm like, oh, I don't know that actor. Let me learn about them. Like, we don't know everything there is, you know, we're all learning each and every day. Um, I feel like I had something else. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. All good. It's Friday. <laughs> um, next question asks, when I send in a self tape, should I send in a link or attach a video? Or what's your okay. Um, I used to say send in a link <laughs> um, because, but I now I say send a downloadable link. So I want to be able to view it. Um, most times I have to keep track of it if I'm, you know, if I'm doing a um, a pilot or something, and it's for one of the the lead roles, I have to track it. So I'm going to probably have it uploaded to another site. So if I can't get you to upload it directly, then I'm going to say um, yeah, send a downloadable link. Yeah, just whatever you do, don't send a YouTube link. Just don't do that. Yeah, no, no, because we can't download those. But also make sure that if you're sending, especially now, um, if there's more than one scene or you're doing more than one take, you don't want to send one long video with just, you know, all of the scenes and all of the takes. You want to, because if, you know, I like scene one, take three, I, I don't want to go through scene two and you know what I mean? I want to go straight to scene three. So just make sure each one is a clip. Make sure your slate is a clip. Make sure each scene is a clip and then send all of those clips. And then I can decide which ones are the best to, to send out. And that's a perfect segue for a couple other questions that are asking, what is the time limit for self-tapes? There's always going to be a deadline. Um, I encourage, even if I have a deadline, I encourage the actor to get it done as soon as possible. Um, only because you never know how quickly we're going to have uh, to to cast a role. I know, especially with COVID, it's really difficult, you know, because, you know, you have, each person has to test. And so if you don't pass your COVID test, you know, then that's a whole other issue. But there's a series of tests that you have to go through. So I encourage you um, to get it in as quickly as possible so we can see it. Um, just because television moves so fast anyway, you know, everything moving fast. You don't want to wait to the, the deadline because then there's a good chance I may have already sent that link off. Um, the next question is asking, when there is a posting for a role on a breakdown service, are you supposed to make up your own lines when none are provided for the descriptions of the said role? You want me to read that? Under, yeah, I don't understand that question. When there is a posting for a role on a breakdown service, are you supposed to should you make up your own lines when none are provided for the description of the said role? If you're getting, are you getting an audition? Are they not providing you material? Because 
if that's the case and it sounds like it may be background and that's something different than, you know. If, on- if you ask that question, could you be a little more specific so we can make sure that we answer it properly? It's mm-hmm. anonymous. So just make sure that you, if you can just send me a message to clarify that question, I'll make sure that they answer it properly. I'll, I'll move on to the next one in the meantime. Um, hi, I started out as a casting intern and I currently intern in talent management. I've enjoyed every aspect of each internship thus far. How do you know where in the realm of casting you fit in? I think it's trial and error because no two jobs are created equal. No two casting director offices are gonna be the same experience. No two studios, no two agencies, who you work for at an agency is going to be vastly different. So I do think it's a little bit of trial and error. What I would suggest is do your homework, figure out what you want in a workplace. Do you want someone who's going to mentor you? Do you want to, you know, figure out kind of what you're looking for. And I think, you know, if you do your homework and, you know, our industry is all about relationships, network, try to, you know, get whatever background information you can on an office before you take an interview or take a job there. I think it's all about personal fit. You could work at one studio and be completely miserable and work at another studio and love it. It's all about your colleagues and what shows you're covering or what shows you're working on at a casting director's office. I think it's all very dependent. So I would just encourage you to, and I think, you know, you're going to have a lot of different jobs likely in this industry. I think that more people than not, especially nowadays with all the mergers and, you know, reorgs happening every five minutes, you know, everyone's moving around. It's, it's a huge game of um, musical chairs. Um, I would just encourage you to really find a good fit because it's all about personal fit. It's not necessarily about this side or that side, but it's about finding the person who's really going to mentor you through this crazy industry that we all, you know, work in and love. Um, but it does take some guidance. I, I think it's really hard to do it on your own. So I just encourage you to find those people. And I think that's going to inform like your workplace more than like, you know, which job do I fit in? I agree. So we have time for a couple more questions. Um, I know you mentioned Actors Access as a good site to use as a beginning actor. Are there any other resources or specific paths or tips for people who are looking to jumpstart their acting career? Um, I think you you have to surround yourself with like-minded individuals um, outside of training, outside of, you mean, and, and I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this question correctly. When you say acting tips, do they mean how to get in front of an, a casting director or just in general overall? Because if it's overall, then I think we kind of cover that. But I think if it's, um, but I think if it's just tips uh, on how to get in front of a casting director, it's the days of crashing auditions are now over. You cannot come into our office and and just crash. <laughs> like you used to be able to. Um, but I think most cast and directors have a social media presence. Um, I think, I, I know I do. I, um, I think that it, if you can, you know, you tag them as much as you can. They're going to get tired. They'll probably, you know, untag you. But I will say this. I, I save a lot of videos because I never know when I might need that, um, that person for some sort of something. So I have you know, the little save button, that little flag that helps you save on Instagram. I say, I have so many of those because sometimes I'm looking for a singer. Sometimes I'm looking for kids. Sometimes I'm looking for, you know what I mean? I'm looking for so many different things that I'm constantly, and I go to social for it, you know, especially if they're specialty acts. Um, So I think um, definitely try to reach who the casting director is socially. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't say do this I'm not encouraging you to email casting directors at all. But what I am saying is if you've done something that is um, memorable, like, hey, I'm going to be, you know, I'm doing this huge recurring co-star on, you know, 911 can, you know, check it out if you can. I think those are the things, like if there's an event that you think is special, that you want a casting director to, to know that you've done so they can see your body of work, definitely do those things because, it, you know, when they come through, depending on when they come through in my desk, I could easily say, you know what, I send it to my associate, keep this person in mind. So we have a folder of all the people that we want to keep in mind for projects. And then, you know, and he's a beast. So he goes in and is just like, oh, what about this person you say, keep in mind of? 
damn, Gregory, I didn't actually, but you know, so he, he holds me accountable for that, which I really appreciate. Yeah, we do the same thing, so. Okay, we have one last question before we wrap this amazing conversation up. Um, a couple of people asked, how do we find auditions? How do we look for, go about searching for legitimate audition opportunities? Again, uh, Actors Access, breakdowns are released there, but also um, casting about. I, I, that's some, every time I'm casting stuff, I'm like, how do these people know what I'm doing? Um, there's a service that literally every time I release a breakdown, Leah Dan on Twitter, Leah Daniels Butler is casting so and so. Leah Daniels Butler is casting so. Casting about, I don't know who their source are, who are their sources, but they're like the FBI. They know everything. It's, it's cast it. Oh, is it the same company? Yeah. Well, can they get? Never mind. That's another story. <laughs> But okay, well then there you have it. Then cast it, cast it, break down. Um, I think there is another one, um, Casting Network. Yeah, they have a lot of commercials, music videos, like that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But again, those are all great opportunities to Leah's point. If you are in a commercial, I mean, we all just saw the Super Bowl commercials. Like if you're in a commercial, you never know what that might translate into. Like Melina mm -hmm. Vaintraub's career has taken off because of AT&T. So, you know, I think any opportunity is a good opportunity. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I just saw Jake, the um, Jake, the guy from State Farm. Literally, I just read him on an audition. Yeah, we're gonna sit down <laughs> with him next week. So amazing. Well, we've reached the end of our discussion. I, I just want to thank Michelle and Leah for carving out time. I know everyone's super slammed, um, and it's Friday. And just thank you so much for carving out time to speak to the students and the talent here today. I hope this was helpful and resourceful um, for everyone in attendance. I know I learned a lot and I've been so honored to talk with these two amazing, amazing women in this space. So as I said before, um, do the work, be proactive. This is an amazing space, be confident. I hope that you guys took notes, that you have great takeaways. Um, like I said before, I just wanna reiterate to make sure you follow the California State University Entertainment Alliance. They have so many more events that we partner with them just like this. Every other week, we focus on a different area of entertainment. So make sure you follow us, that you tune in, that you download the Pipelines mobile app to connect to opportunities in tech, creative, and entertainment. And just thank you so much for investing in your future and your craft by being here today. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. I want to thank our panelists. And just have fun. Do something fun this weekend. We all are at the end of our, our wits this week. But thank, thank you so much. much. Thank, thank you for having us. us. We appreciate it. Yeah, all thank right. you. Bye. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Leah.